was to enhance the assessment literacy of teachers of EAL students um, and um, also for teachers of EAL students. And um, as you're probably aware, there are three products of the TEAL project. So there's the web-based EAL assessment toolkit, um, there's a three-day professional learning program, and as of um, week one of this term, I'm very pleased to announce the release of the reading and vocabulary assessment for EAL students reveal, which after a very long gestation period is now available to schools in all sectors. So I'll talk a little bit about that later. And so just to give you a bit of an idea about um, how much time and effort has been put into the TIL project. Here's a, a little overview of um, the initial timeline. So it began in 2009, as you can see. It was a cross-sectoral project that involved DEET, the Catholic Education Sector of Victoria, uh, the Independent Schools Victoria, and National Partnerships money from the Commonwealth. And the project started with an examination of assessment practices in Victoria and New South Wales. And research into what teachers needed. And the initial scoping work um, involved teachers being asked to trial different assessment instruments and give feedback. And there was also an examination of teacher-based practice in assessment in Victoria and New South Wales. Um, and that was partly due to the fact that Professor Chris Davison was involved in the project from the early stages. And um, she is the head of the School of Education. Um, at New South Wales Uni. So after the scoping work and needs analysis was carried out, 30 plus experienced cross-sectoral EAL specialist teachers from all levels of schooling examined the suitability of a selected range of assessment tools and discussed what they wanted or needed for effective assessment of EAL development and proficiency. They also evaluated how well assessment models currently available nationally and internationally might be adapted to, the, to suit EAL learners in the Australian Text. And key findings from the needs analysis um, basically concluded that, um, and this was the work undertaken in 2010, that teachers were often carrying out assessment activities on an ad hoc basis and it was very much trial and error rather than being informed by a strong pedagogical or consistent approach to assessment. And six agreed common criteria were decided upon and published in the final report. And these criteria reflected professional practices, perspectives and values of EAL teachers. And they provided professional standards for guiding the development and implementation of any proposed EAL assessment tools. And these criteria have informed the content of the TEAL toolkit. So obviously they're all fairly fundamental to good assessment tools being culturally accessible, providing useful information, being able to be easily understood, meeting the unique needs of EAL learners, and forming the basis of an EAL community of practice. And this all, all of these findings led to the Online Assessment Resource Centre, which includes teacher professional learning modules and assessment tools bank, assessment for teaching and learning exemplars, and an online teacher discussion forum. And so just to um, talk a little bit about um, assessment for learning, this is basically the key pedagogical approach that has informed the whole TEAL project. And the definition that you can see on the page is the definition used by Chris Davison, um, who I've already mentioned. Um, and um, it was when assessment for learning was formed as a concept, it was coined to combine summative and formative assessment. And it came out of the UK where focus was heavily reliant on summative assessment. So um, the concept of assessment for learning or formative assessment um, was initially um, introduced by Black and William and it then travelled around the world. And in Victoria, if you've been teaching for a while, you may that there was a lot of work done on developing understanding of assessment for, of and as. And this information can still be found on um, DEET website pages 
along with the principles of good assessment. However, now in the third wave, we believe we should not distinguish between four of and as, as it distracts from the real work of designing effective assessment. And it is also um, can be quite confusing for teachers trying to distinguish between the three aspects, four of and as, whereas formative assessment is um, basically encapsulates all of those good assessment practices. And it also has a very strong focus on the learner taking responsibility for their learning. So some key principles and characteristics of assessment for learning, it's embedded in teaching and learning. Learning goals are explicitly shared. There's a lot of continuous peer and self-assessment, um, constructive feedback um, provided um, at all steps of the process. Um, and teachers, parents and students regularly review and reflect on assessment data. Um, it is also assumed that every student can improve. So you might notice that these um, principles share a lot of commonality with the, um, the HIT strategies, the high impact teaching strategies that a lot of schools are using now and the work of other researchers. For example, Robert Mazzano's nine high yield teaching strategies and John Hattie's work is also now being used in a lot of department um, in government schools and particularly the focus on learning goals, peer and self-assessment and constructive feedback. So just to um, go back to the, um, so I've made the screen smaller. Has anyone got any questions so far? Um, I'm assuming not because no one no one has asked anything, so that's good. We'll keep going. Can everyone still hear me? I don't know if I'm lost in cyberspace or... Oh, good. Oh, thank you, everyone. <laughs> um, slightly discombobulating. Okay, I'll go back to... Um, are people happy for me to, um, to um, go full screen with the PowerPoint? Oh, Paula, you can't hear now. Oh, okay, that's good, Barbara. Okay, so I think that's go full screen. Yes? Okay, full screen is good. Okay. So why the focus on formative assessment and not, um, it's often more popular, cousin, summative assessment. The results of Black and William um, and Hattie's research has emphasised the importance and the impact of assessment on learning. So it has a very strong and powerful research base. We'll have a closer look at, um, at William um, in a minute. Um, we know that assessment that provides feedback and actively involves learners in self-reflection is very powerful in improving student learning outcomes. Um, so um, and that um, Hattie has done a great deal of research on the effect size of constructive feedback, which makes has a huge impact on, on student learning in the classroom. So basically the slides I've just shown sum up the assessment for learning pedagogy that informs the TIL resources. Um, and this approach is explored in a lot more detail in the professional learning modules that we will have a look at um, in a minute. But just to um, clarify, um, the TIL resources are not just for EAL teachers, even though um, EAL specialist teachers are the target audience. There's also um, some quite detailed information for non-EAL teachers, principals and curriculum leaders, and of course, EAL students. So when and where can it be used? TIL can be used to on the assessment, um, identification of entry and exit points for newly arrived students at English language schools and centres as well as mainstream schools. It can, the resources can be used to monitor and track student progress over time and in different locations and used for diagnostic and formative purposes. Um, and so the idea is that the resources um, can be used somewhat flexibly by teachers depending on um, on the context that they're teaching in. We've had teachers attend the um, Putting Teal into Practice who um, are speech pathologists 
um, and who aren't actually EAL trained, but they've managed to use the resources very productively. We have teachers who are mainstream teachers with a few EAL students in their class and teachers from language centres. So they've all um, managed to use the TEAL resources to suit their needs in the classroom. So what is in the professional learning section of the website? So that's one of the key sections. It's got a lot of um, EAL related topics, um, professional readings and resources and video clips. So um, what I'm going to do now is um, share my screen with you. So this might just take a second. So I can, yeah, it might be an idea of people, as Dave said, to make um, it full screen can, from your yes. end. I think you should be able to do that if you click on the arrow icon in the top right hand corner. So can everyone see um, my screen now that I'm sharing? Dave, can you see it? Okay, thanks, Stephanie. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, um, there's um, about 10 topics um, that are all um, designed to Im improve and enhance um, teachers' understanding of the whole assessment cycle and the assessment for learning pedagogy. A lot of the information is actually um, really useful for um, non-EAL teachers as well, as I mentioned, um, because a lot of it is about good practice, whether you have um, EAL teachers or not. Oh, Marion's just telling me it is behind another screen. Let's see if this... Okay, is that okay now? So um, if you, we'll just go into the first one to have a look. Um, and the interrelationship between assessment planning, teaching and learning. And um, you can see that they're all organised in the same way and they all have um, the same subheadings. So the headings, needless to say, are, are quite self-explanatory. So the reflection um, is just encouraging you to think about what you do know what gaps there might be in your understanding and um, also I guess to encourage you to think about things that you, you might not have thought about before. Um, so input is um, information input from the TEAL team um, to provide you with some um, more information, some, some background reading. Um, some of them have quite a bit of text but there's also um, some videos as well to break it up a little bit. And um, here's Dylan William. So there's a lot of um, experts who have been involved in contributing to the TEAL resources. So application is then about how you might um, actually incorporate some of these suggestions into your own practice. And um, there's some ready-made um, documents and resources here that you can easily access and um, further um, every topic also has reading and resources so there's links to um, lots of um, interesting articles and videos and so on um, and um, just to um, really I guess consolidate your understanding of this topic and then follow-up might involve returning to this um, topic um, further down the track and or just thinking about how you can use these resources going forward. So I also um, just wanted to go into looking at knowing students, which is one of my um, favourite topics. And um, uh, I think 
sometimes, especially as EAL teachers, we get so caught up in teaching um, being language focused that we might forget um, about all the other sorts of important things um, in terms of getting to know your students that are equally as important and obviously um, developing that good rapport with the students is a really key way to um, having a successful and positive classroom environment. Um, and I thought one of the interesting activities was um, in application. So dividing a piece of paper into three columns and then in column one listing your students by name and um, in column two writing one interest for each student and then in column three um, writing something important about the student's family and um, oh, going back to number three um, placing a tick next to each interest if you're sure the student knows you know about it because often we do pick up things about students but it's not through the student telling us. I thought that was an interesting way of really testing how um, how much you do actually know about your students. Um, again, further reading and resources and then some um, follow-up resources as well. So that um, could be quite a little bit time consuming, but if it's something that you need to do um, once with each student at the beginning of the term. So I think that's a really worthwhile activity. As you can see, once you've um, clicked on the toggles, you can just go back. So the website is um, all um, very user-friendly, basically. Um, and the other one, the other topic I wanted to show you was involving learners actively in assessment, which is another um, key component of the assessment for learning um, pedagogical approach of all the TEAL resources. And I'd like to show you this video of Dylan William talking about the importance of self and peer assessment. So what I'm going to have to do is um, stop sharing that screen for a second. And Go back to uh, okay, it's hopefully not everyone uh, can hear this. It's not formative. Okay. It's only I'm formative if the information fed back to the learner is used by the learner in making improvement. Is this why um, self and peer assessment is so important? I could hear that. Um, it's just uh, so yes. Yeah, so now. self and um, peer assessment are at the heart of effective formative assessment, because the teacher has um, got can time everyone hear that to okay? give individual feedback to every single learner. So if, okay. you, if this is going to be manageable, yep. in the okay. Of All right. I'll just keep saying it. We have to find ways of engaging the students more in this process. Okay. Thanks, uh, everyone. So that individuals are able to monitor their own progress towards these goals. And, often, and engage in self-directed learning. And when they can't do that, they need to be able to rely on their peers to help them make progress rather than going to the teacher all the time. Our experience has been that students find self-assessment very difficult. Even when teachers give them criteria or scoring rubrics, students find it very difficult to apply those rubrics in the context of their own work. So we advise teachers to start with peer assessment. Now I, need, I think I need to make plain that I am not talking about students giving each other grades. I think it's utterly wrong for any student to be placed in the position of giving another student a grade that will be reported to parents or used in any way for summative purposes. When we talk about peer assessment, we mean students helping each other improve their work. And what we found is that students are much better at spotting errors in other people's work than they are in their own. So when teachers engage in, in peer assessment, giving students clear rubrics for what the, what the success criteria are and help students engage in this process. The students who get the feedback 
make improvements because of the advice they've been given. But perhaps more surprisingly, the students who give the feedback also learn a lot because they come to understand the success criteria in the context of somebody else's work, which is far less emotionally threatening than doing it in the context of their own work. And therefore, they are actually the biggest beneficiaries. We find the students are often much tougher on each other than the teacher would dare to be. And the students quite value this. Some students have said that they prefer not to work in friendship groups because they find it more difficult to be honest with their friends. And therefore, teachers have told us that it's often more effective if students do not work with their friends. Other teachers have said that they will want to get beyond that. And they've experimented with some kind of templates for peer assessment. One that's gone down very effectively is the idea of two stars and a wish. So in other words, when a student is commenting on somebody else's work, they have to say two positive things, the two stars, and one thing that they wish the student had done in that piece of work. That's the wish. Um, okay, any comments on that video? I like that he very sort of succinctly manages to, um, to sum up actively involving students, the fact that teachers literally do not have a time, enough time in the classroom to provide feedback at all times individually to students and that it is okay to, um, to release responsibility um, at times. So. Um, if you go back to the website, you can also download the Three Stars and a Wish um, resource, which is um, also very useful for teachers or for, st um, for students when they're um, doing a peer assessment activity. So, stop sharing that one. Back to the PowerPoint. Thanks for bearing with everyone. And also thank you, Suzanne, for, um, for um, adding some information in the chat pod. Suzanne is our amazing webmaster of the TEAL website. So if you ever have any questions, um, you can um, contact her via, with her contact details. Um, I'll provide them later. So thank you for that. Um, OK, so we've had a look at involving learners actively in assessment. Um, and going on to the, oh, I'll just have a look at what um, a few people are saying. Yeah, definitely, Barbara. It should not be used for um, to provide um, to provide any sort of um, official um, mark for a student. Stephanie says teachers need to guide peer assessment. Yep, is not helpful. Um, yes, and it definitely has to be something that is guided and that students need training in. Even older students are not able to do it easily um, at the beginning. So, but it is definitely worth um, persevering um, in certain scenarios. I think, for example, in the drafting process, um, students can be trained. Even younger students can be trained to provide some productive feedback. And yet, yeah, definitely the non-friend groups. Um, yes, and true, that's different for adults. Okay, so going to the, um, we're going to have a look at the. Um, oh, sorry, I think did we have a question up there? Someone put their hand up. No, people are happy to just keep writing in the. Yes, yeah, Stella, I know what you mean. I always do a <clears throat> remarkable number of typos when I'm typing into the chat pod too for some reason. Yes, Stephanie, that's right. It can't be um, beginner le absolute beginner level students um, doing that peer assessment. Unless you're, you're working with yeah, very, very simple criteria. Jasmine, I hope you're um, coming back on board.
Okay, all right, we'll just keep moving on. So looking, we'll have a quick look at the um, assessment tools. So you probably know that there are common writing, oral reading and vocabulary assessment tools. Um, so we'll just go um, back into the website now to have a look at those. I'll share my screen again. Um, and as you know, you can um, make it full screen. Um, yeah, Christine has made a good point about getting different um, combinations of L1 and L1 groupings, definitely. Um, if you have enough sort of combinations of L1 or first language in the classroom, I think that's a really good idea to maximise those learning opportunities. Uh, it, it's covered by the... Yes, um, Jatha using sentence data is uh, also a really uh, great idea. Yeah. Okay, so just going back to the assessment tools. And I'll just make sure that... That's better. And I think if participants wanted to see that in full screen, they um, can, can click on the see, arrow um, icon in the right-hand corner to make it full screen. My screen, okay, as in the TEAL website. Oh, the um, PowerPoint. Is it? Oh, okay. All right, I'll see. Um, how's that? Better? Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right, great. Okay, so um, just ha having a quick look at the um, assessment tools now. So as you can see, the first one is the common writing assessment tool. And as with the other parts of the TEAL website, they um, this section follows a similar format. Um, all of the, the writing and the oral um, tools have these same guiding principles and advice. So I think that's one of the really positive aspects of the TEAL website, that teachers are very much supported in, um, in introducing a task and, um, and sort of understanding the purpose of it and all of the information they need to know. Um, so you can watch a video about um, preparing to assess students' learning then you just um, go back to the main part, um, think about what you have to do for the students to get them ready, choosing a task. So obviously that's based on um, the teaching and learning cycle, proficiency level of your students, um, their interest, um, curriculum demands and so on using the assessment criteria. Um, so the, um, there are, this might make more sense if we actually go back into um, using, looking at the criteria, um, information about making um, Aligning your assessment with the EL continuum. And then the fun part is looking at the actual assessment tasks and criteria. Um, so as you can see, depending on the level of your students, you can choose an appropriate task. So just as an example, if you had um, an A2 student, you might um, think that they'll be um, interested in um, you know, learning about animals is a very popular um, topic in the lower primary years. So you would look at task specification to um, find out what the purpose of the activity is, the linguistic structures and features, and so on, what vocab you might need to introduce or recycle. Um, look at um, how you might actually um, run the activity and administer the classroom. And here in the uh, task implementation, there's further resources. So um, if you click on the PDF, it'll just open in, um, in another web page, which makes it really easy to quickly look at resources. Whereas if you open open a Word document, um, it will ask if you want to um, um, open and download it. So it just takes a little bit longer. 
So then the assessment criteria, there's an unmarked criteria sheet. All of the criteria sheets relate to each, um, so they're all uh, custom built or designed basically for each particular assessment task. So um, this one relates to um, my favourite animal, as you can see. So all of the um, all of the phrasing and so on relates to this particular task. So it could be um, modified if you were going to do a similar task, but they are basically created for this um, for these particular tasks. Then um, the other um, intention of the teal resources was making a bank of a benchmark evidence-based um, moderated samples of work. So you can go in and look at um, samples. If you click on a sample, it'll enlarge to make it a bit easier to look at. And um, so as you can see, different samples. If you like, it's a good activity to um, to have a look at where you might place this student if you're unsure about making some of these decisions. And then you can go to the annotations and commentary. So you can actually have a look at what the EAL specialist said about that particular sample. And then you can go in and have a look at the, um, the completed criteria sheet. So as you can see with this completed criteria sheet relating to my favourite animal, there's um, one to four levels on the left hand side. These are actually um, generalised levels and they're relative, they're not absolute. So that means that these four levels relate to these the particular OSVAL stages that are being um, that students are at if they're doing this task. So um, that's with that in mind, um, potentially people from other jurisdictions could use these resources. Um, so what they would do is look at the levels on the left hand side, whereas in Victoria we can look at the right hand side and see how the student's um, level relates to the OSVELs or um, EAL continuum stages. So um, as you can see the students here would be from V1 to S2. So um, if a student is mostly indicating um, mastery of their skills and knowledge um, on, the, on the bottom row, they, they would be V1. Um, the middle row would be moving towards the A2, B2 and S2. And if they're um, indicating all the skills described in the top two rows, then they would be A2, B2, S2. But as, um, as it, you will see in the annotations and commentary, um, the TEAL team were, were um, very determined to not assign a particular EL continuum level. Um, they said that um, this student um, exhibits descriptions of B1. So as you know, you need to do more than one assessment task to gain a full understanding of what a student's um, proficiency is in writing. And now just quickly going down, um, you can see the connection between the oral and writing tasks. So there's quite a few tasks that are repeated between the oral and the writing um, assessment tasks. So I think it would actually be a good idea to um, perhaps start with um, an oral task so that your students are just practicing that oral language and then you might move on to um, to doing it as a writing activity once they've been introduced to and mastered some of the new vocabulary. Um, so it, some um, schools are using, say choosing um, an assessment task and, um, and doing it at the beginning of a term with students in the whole year level, EAL and non-EAL, and then um, repeating the same rule or activity at the end of the term. So sort of benchmarking students' progress. Um, so that's something that um, some schools have found very useful. And as you can see um, from the criteria sheet, it is, um, you know, it is quite dense. It does contain um, a lot of information. So it's not something that you could do every day with every activity. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as well. 
um, but I guess it is something that a specialist EAL teacher would find useful. Um, it is complex, but um, it is designed to give teachers a really um, accurate idea of, um, of a student's performance at, with a particular activity. Any questions? Um, Stephanie, are there criteria sheets that match the Victorian curriculum? Only the EAL curriculum, not the Victorian curriculum. Can the assessment? Yes, it can definitely be um, printed out. So you have the option of <clears throat> printing out PDFs or Word versions of all of the resources. Okay, oh, better keep moving right along. So I'll go now to having a look at the reading and vocabulary assessment, which, um, as I said, has now been released. So um, there's been a lot of work put into that, as you, some of you may be aware, if you've been involved in any of the school trials, they actually started writing um, the assessment items in 2010. So um, it's been a long time in development. So, but there are conditions attached to its use and that's so the department can continue to do some quality assurance monitoring of the assessments and continue to collect data in, you know, to improve the instrument, develop new reports and um, build on our campaign to, um, to build excellence in EAL teaching and learning. So if you're not sure about what to do, you just have to go to number two and download the school guide. And that shows you all of the information you need to know from what Reveal is designed to do to how you can access it. And um, the other, um, the other condition is completing a short um, teacher access survey, which according to the um, uh, survey results takes about two minutes to access. So um, that's it's quite short. Okay. Um, and the next thing I wanted to show you was the um, annotated units of work. And just quickly show you unit seven, which is the um, newest one. Um, oh, uh, a couple of people um, have raised their hand. Deanne. Um, Stella asks, could a CRT access it? Yes, they could if they um, just follow the same conditions. So providing uh, teacher judgment data about their students. So they would have to um, know what general level their students were at in reading and vocab. So that, But that's just the um, broad level descriptor, as in B1, B2 or B3 doesn't have to be drilled down to B1.1, B1.2 or anything like that. Um, Diane asks, will these resources be updated? Um, yes, they will be when the new EL curriculum is introduced, which um, is potentially next year. Um, okay, so the, um, the latest um, annotated unit of work that was added is a procedural text. And um, as you can see, there's different tabs where you can go through and have a look at what it involves. Um, but I would recommend um, downloading the PDF version. And as you can see, there's a huge amount of information explaining everything you need to do from the beginning to the end. And that is just a um, fantastic resource that has recently been added to the TEAL website. So it's very exciting that we've got that one there now. And finally, the um, discussion forum. As you can see, there's a public forum. So um, anyone can look at that, but you do, it, as it says here, you must be logged in to create new topics. There's a, um, also a professional learning forum, a benchmarking forum, um, which I have to log in to, to see. So once you're logged in, you'll be able to see um, samples of student work and um, and teachers' responses to them. So that's also um, 
a great resource. And the discussion forum um, tends to um, have um, a rather um, interesting life in terms of sometimes there's lots of people adding to it depending on if we have a putting till into practice um, program happening because it's one of the between session tasks and then it might go dormant for a while so we're always looking for ideas about how to keep it alive and really dynamic because as you would know from mentioning at the beginning of the webinar having that professional community of practice is one of, was one of the key aims of the TIL project. And Stella, how do you log in? Um, it's really easy. You just go down to the register to post in the TEAL forums. And you don't um, even need an Edgemail address. Some people, um, aren't, they're not, not everyone is from um, government school. So it's uh, open to um, people from the sectors as well. OK, and then the What's New section. So that's, we've still got the um, I can see the PowerPoint, yes. Reveal. And um, we have other events coming up. And what I will do is stop sharing this now and go back to the PowerPoint. And can everyone see? OK, thanks, Yun. Hopefully everyone can see the PowerPoint again. Dave, can you see the PowerPoint again? Yep, OK. All right, so. Um, oh, yeah, so just going back to the annotated um, annotated units of work, um, that's just an example of an overview page. So you can see um, exactly what sort of um, skills and knowledge and, and so on will be included in each unit of work. So that's really useful if you just want to get a um, and have a, you know, see a quick, see what it includes at a quick glance. And I know that we're just about to run out of time, so I will mention the um, further professional learning opportunities. Um, you can you could see in the benchmarking forum that there were samples of student work, and they're taken from online moderation sessions that Suzanne Stenier um, has run and organised. And basically, that's an opportunity for any teacher to join the session. Teachers have uploaded samples of student work, and we've discussed what. Um, level of the continuum they're at and had some really productive discussions in terms of um, what separates different um, samples of work and so on. So there's actually one um, tomorrow afternoon. Um, if anyone is still in the um, online learning zone, you're very welcome to attend if you're an, um, a upper primary teacher. And then we've got a secondary level um, session coming up in November. and we're organising two Putting Teal into Practice programs for um, next year. So um, there's information on that on our um, EAL and Multicultural Education Professional Learning Calendar. You can just Google that if you go to the department's um, website pages. So that's quite easy to find and we, um, keep, we keep that updated. So that's something else um, to, I, you know, hope that everyone keeps an eye on so they know what's out there. And of course, um, keep an eye on um, Vic Teasel events. They always have um, fabulous professional learning yeah, that's right. programs. We'll, um, we'll put um, so that's something else to keep an eye on. The on the website as well as um, <laughs> so, put it. So, only four minutes over time. You, um, if that's okay with any you, questions, Alice. comments, or feedback about anything that has been mentioned or that um, you would like me to clarify? Uh, yes, we can make the PowerPoint slides available. Um, as this is technically a Vic Tiesel, um presentation, it will end up on their website, I imagine, Dave. We haven't. Um, yep. Yep. Um, yeah, sure. Yep. Um, Barbara, your question earlier, I'll just have to scroll up to see. Oh, oh, adult um, learners and the EAL curriculum. Um, it could, it could, um, it it could definitely um, be used for adult learners because you've got the um, those four um, 
levels on the left hand side of all of the criteria sheets so obviously you would just choose um, assessment tasks that are suitable for adult learners so it might not be what I had for lunch um, but it could be something that suits their proficiency level but you may yeah if you're teaching adult learners you're probably not using the EAL continuum but you could still use the, um, the criteria sheets Um, yes, independent schools can access Reveal. Um, if you email insight at edumail.vic.gov.au, they will um, provide you with more information about how to um, enrol your student on the platform and then you just refer back to the admin guide. So Julie, you just have to look at um, the, um, go back to the Reveal um, page to have a if I if you didn't quite catch that um, email address um, so that you can email them thanks Sujatha yeah that's right, right. so Takako so we'll, that um, was in the coming um, days we'll send insight, out a certificate -S 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 um, we've now um, at um, are able to put your names on it so the person asking about whether it can be in word format it should have your name on it um, when we send it out to you oh thanks Julie glad you could attend Thanks, Barbara. So, yep, looks like um, Dave will take care of the certificates. Okay. Thanks, Russell. Glad you could be here. Thanks, Annette, Catherine, and Anna. Is that Shion from UNSW? Good to see you, if it is. I think I'll just also just echo Annalise the, um, thanks, the thanks of all the participants Gia. by saying thank you very much from Vic Tisol. Uh, really Lakshmi. excellent oh, um, hi, hi, presentation. Um, and yeah, we look forward to. Thanks, um, Suzanne. Uh, and thanks for following more and more up. people using these resources, which are so important. Oh, um, that's good. Thank you, Amanda. So thank you very much from Vic T. Sol. Um, I'll also yes, just April, for participants. Um, um, we'll be yeah, in the um, chat function. I'm now just pasting recently. in a link to a um, survey. Uh, we value your feedback greatly, and we want to make sure our PD is relevant and useful. So if you'd um, like to take, it takes about two or three minutes, you can just click on the link below. Um, otherwise, we will send it out in an email and you can do it in your own time. But uh, yeah, thank you, yep. Annalise, and thank you to participants. Yep. Okay, thanks, Dave.